How are you feeling, Sam? Mm -hmm. Your grandfather is here to see you. He wanted to come visit since you were sick. But mom, I hate spending time with grandpa. He's not fun at all. Hey, Sonny! How are you feeling? I'll make a quick exit. Have fun. I brought you a special present. What is it? A book. I wrote it, you know. Is that it? Yeah. Yeah. A Tale of Two Cities by Charles Dickens. Me, your grandfather. Book the first recalled to life, chapter one, the period. It was the best of times, it was the worst of times. It was the age of wisdom, it was the age of foolishness. It was the epoch of- Grandpa, why are your books so boring? Because I'm a Victorian! A large cask of wine had been dropped and broken in the street. The accident had happened in getting it out of a cart, the cask had tumbled out with a run, the hoops had burst, and it lay on the stones just outside the door of the wine shop. Shatter like a walnut shell. All the people within reach had suspended their business or their idleness to run to the spot and drink the wine. Why were they drinking wine off the ground? It's gross. They were hungry, but they had no money for food at all. It's a symbol for the hunger for freedom, too. That's Just so you know. Oh, that's messed up. We should give them food and freedom. You know, maybe, maybe ones are better. Killed, shrieked the man in wild desperation, extending both arms at their length above his head and staring at him. Dead. It is extraordinary to me, said the Marquis, that you people cannot take care of yourselves and your children. One or the other of you is forever in the way. How do I know what injury you have done my horses? See, give him that. You're telling me he ran over a kid and he's more worried about what it did to his horse? Yeah. His constraint was so manifest, and it was so manifest too, that it originated in an unwillingness to approach the subject that Charles Darnay hesitated. Shall I go on, sir? Another blank. Yes, go on. You anticipate what I would say, that you cannot know how earnestly I say it, how earnestly I feel it, without knowing my secret heart, and the hopes and fears and anxieties with which it has long been laden. Dear Dr. Manette, I love your daughter fondly, dearly, disinterestedly, devotedly. If ever there were love in the world, I love her. You have loved yourself. Let your old love speak for me. Grandpa Dickens, why does everyone love everyone? Us Victorian writers love love. But just ten minutes ago, that guy ran over a kid with a cart. What happened between then and now? That's realism for you. I see that child who bore my name, a man winning his way up in that path of life which once was mine. I see him winning it so well that my name is made illustrious there by the light of his. It is a far, far better thing that I do than I have ever done. It is a far, far better rest that I go to than I have ever known. What happened to him? He was given a second chance as the son of the girl he loved. Why'd you do that? That's what Victorian writers do. You see, son, we love the idea of resurrection. Maybe if you listen to your mother once in a while, you'd be reincarnated just like Cindy Carton was. <laughs> We're trying to fix the line. Yeah, we don't know what the line. Why were they drinking up? Wine off those on the ground. There's an ant. There are two ants. I killed one of them. Nope. Where'd you put it? It's on the floor. You know. <laughs> I didn't know there was any like dead ants on the floor. <laughs> Fix my tree. Oh, you use your brother's tennis racket? No. No, you're you broke my tree. tree. I didn't do it. Still. <laughs> <laughs> the culprit. Okay, you're from my tree. Yes.